Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Jack Lifton. How are you today, Jack? I'm fine, Tracy. How are you? I'm great. And I'm going to start with, I can't wait to see you this next week at the Technology Metal Summit. Can you give us uh, some kind of glimpse into what you're going to be uh, talking about? I've decided to talk about the, how the financial world views uh, the resource world. And there isn't very much understanding in finance. And, and I'd like to make the point that the Chinese seem to understand this a lot better than we do, how to finance companies that make critical materials for our society. Never mind the share prices and the pumps and the promotion and all that. We, we really need to get these companies financed. And I've changed my mind now after 75 years. I've decided that national governments in Canada and the United States should indeed invest in these resources. I'm going to talk a little about that. Okay, so speaking of governments, I want to ask you, because I know you sit on the board, uh, board of directors for Texas Rare Earth Resources, yes. and yes. they've just announced a deal with the U.S. Defense Logistics Agency, and I understand that this is the first time they've ever awarded a contract like this before, so talk to me about this. It's, it's certainly the first one ever in the rare earths field. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know about the actual history. But the point of this uh, contract, as you say, is to determine whether or not continuous ion chromatography is an effective and economical means of recovering uh, rare earths from deposits such as Texas rare earths. So it, it, to me, it's the first I've ever heard of this, although I understand in World War II they might have awarded similar contracts, the ancestor of this agency. The, the, people have to understand, this is not a, just an award to Texas Rare Earth to supply a few grams of yttrium. This is, in fact, the agency determining whether or not Texas Rare Earths is on the right path to develop its project with the right non-traditional technology, which is continuous ion chromatography. I understand that the uh, in, in originator of that uh, technology will be a panelist next week at the, at the conference. Is well, that correct? It is correct, and I was just about to say, I'm kind of putting you in the hot seat here, Jack. Yes. Because what we have next week is we're going to have uh, a number of the top disruptive, innovative, and revolutionary and groundbreaking rare earth extraction technology uh, representatives all on the same panel. Right. Now, can I get you to uh, to comment on how you think that's going to uh, go down? It's all a matter of economics. Uh, the the three technologies I'm looking at are uh, MRT, the, the, the technology being developed uh, for uh, UCOR rare metals, the continuous ion chromatography that's being developed for Texas rare earths, and what I call targeted uh, solvent extraction, which is the very modern variation of solvent extraction that has been developed by rare element resources and I believe uh, all three of those companies will will be on a panel to discuss uh, the their technologies as they apply to their own deposits and as they might apply to to resource deposits in general so this is actually the first time these latest developed technologies will have been put in the same room and, and talking to each other, let's say, they're, they're promoters. And, and quite frankly, uh, this is probably the most important uh, panel at, at the conference and certainly the most interesting one in, that I've ever seen. Well, thank you for that. I, I agree with you. And of course, we're also going to have the, uh, it's my understanding, we're going to have the Oak Ridge National Laboratories with the membrane extraction <coughs> technology and yes. uh, the innovation uh, metals uh, technology yes. as well. So uh, we've actually extended this panel for uh, over an hour and a half because I don't think we can handle huh? this many scientists together in one hour or less. Yes. So. Speaking of that, and speaking of the upcoming Technology Metal Summit, we also have Amanda Lacaz from Linus, who's going to be kicking it off. You're obviously going to 
to be introducing her. And she's yeah. going to be talking about Linus as a, a turnaround play and what they're planning on doing and being competitive with the Chinese with their processing and their cost. Can you talk to us a little bit about how uh, you perceive uh, uh, Linus and what you expect to happen in this uh, presentation? Uh, as I commented uh, yesterday on Investor Intel, I think that Linus is is producing at least two thirds, perhaps one hundred percent, of all of the rare earths produced outside of China in the so-called rest of the world. Now, Linus, in my opinion, and from knowledge I direct knowledge I have, is the lowest cost uh, separator of light rare earths on the planet. And therefore, that's why it's surviving, and that's why it's competitive. Okay. Now they've had some rough times. They have a, they have a quite nice state of the art, huge uh, processing system in Malaysia. In fact, it's the world's largest solvent extraction plant dedicated to light rare earth separation. It's not only the largest; it's the largest one ever built. And in contrast to a recently failed company, the the Linus plant works. So uh, I'm very optimistic about their future. The Japanese seem to love uh, supply from Linus. Uh, unlike uh, some uh, uh, national uh, nations and uh, corporate uh, uh, representatives of those nations, the Japanese have poured their money into things that work and some things that didn't work. Japanese have spent a lot of money in India, in Vietnam, that hasn't worked out so well, but the money they've invested by giving off takes, I believe, to Linus has been a success. So I think Linus is the star of the present uh, uh, world, where not rest of the world, rare earth industry. Well, they are, and I'm looking forward to seeing Amanda present. Also, of course, we have Mark Smith doing mm -hmm. a, a lunch presentation on NioCorp. Uh, yeah. We're going to be discussing a lot about the super alloys, uh, what's happening in the technology metal sector overall. And Jack, as the founder of the term, you coined the term technology metals. I want you yeah. to know that I just finished having uh, an interview with Hastings Rare Metals, and they kept talking about how they're focused on technology metals. So. <laughs> Um, okay. technology, technology metals, of course, now expand. We've expanded it to lithium and graphite. Can you tell yes. us a little bit more for our audience who may not understand what you meant by technology metals when you came up with this term? Yeah, I mean, I mean uh, those metals, they're not all rare metals, but those metals that enable the technologies we, we have today that underpin the society. The most important technology metal is not a rare metal. It's called copper. Copper is, is literally the, uh, the, uh, the vascular system of our, of, our, of our civilization. But in order to, to take the electricity generated, let's say, in, in northern Manitoba, uh, to, to, run, uh, to charge an iPhone in Florida requires more than just copper. It requires rare earths, lithium, graphite, uranium, many, many, many others. The point is these, these metals and materials, uh, I call graphite a material, although it, it's elemental, and, and, and of course a metal would be like copper. There are a variety of these materials. All of them are important to technology because in one way or another they either conduct electricity or they can be made to conduct electricity, including graphite. Graphite though, is a good conductor. The future of, te of technology is now downstream, Tracy. You're going to see from now on unbelievable developments in the technology of lithium-ion batteries, graphene-based de devices, and new rare earth uh, devices and alloys that will completely change the uh, context in which we speak of these things. We are, we are now entering the next phase of development of technology, metals, and materials, which is extreme high tech. That's why it's so important to pay attention to these new technologies for recovering uh, the rare earths economically and from low concentrations as well as high concentrations. We're going to need these materials, the technology metals, more than ever, and we can't waste them. Recycling is becoming a big deal. It's already a 25,000 ton a year 
uh, industry in China, and it's a zero ton a year industry in the United States. What do you think about that? I think we need to change that. Well, Jack, fantastic. I love your conclusion, and I especially liked when you were mentioning moving downstream the water sound effects behind, uh, <laughs> behind you. So once again, Jack, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Tracy. <laughs>